Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Warriors. This is Mr. Nava coming to you, not exactly live, because you're probably watching this video later, but from the Sanchez Orchestra Room, and this is going to be a lesson on violin, how to read your music, how to play it, and so on. So, uh, each one of you should have gotten the, the violin finger chart that I gave you, and you'll notice at the beginning of the finger chart, you do have these four notes squared off. Okay, like this in the beginning. And it says open strings because these are your open strings. And they're going from lowest to highest. The higher it is in the staff, the more up it is, the higher the string. Okay? So, for example, this lowest string would, of course, be your G. That's how it looks. It can be a quarter note, it could be a half note, it could be a whole note. If it has two little lines, which we call ledger lines on top of it, that's your open G string, okay? So remember that string, remember how it looks, remember that placement. The next one up would be your D. The D string is always gonna be right underneath the first staff line, okay? Not on the first staff line, right below it. It's touching the top of the note. The bottom staff line is touching the top of the note. Then your open A string, is in the second space of your staff. Okay, so if you have a note that's right here, it's always your open A. And then you have, finally, your open E string, which is in the top space of your staff. Okay, now guys, uh, if you're watching this video at home, I want you to get out your violin, and I want you to get out your bow. This is one problem that I'm still seeing uh, students doing. Um, in class is not holding the bow correctly. So, again, I want you to hold the bow, try not to touch the hairs, okay? We don't touch the bow hairs, but I want you to hold the bow like this in your left hand, and then in your right hand, remember what we talked about. You're gonna make a ring with your middle finger and your thumb. You're gonna put the middle finger and the thumb in between the open space of the frog, and you're gonna link them together. It's a ring, holding it right there. The ring finger relaxes, the pinky goes on top and pushes the bow forward, and the index finger goes on its side. The knuckle of your index finger is holding up the bow right there, okay? That is the correct bow hold, all right? Don't just grab it like this. Don't just do some other thing. Watch your hand, especially at this beginning point, because if you're doing it wrong, it's going to create a whole mess of problems later on. So make sure you are holding your bow correctly, okay? Second of all, with the music here, I'm showing you this because during intercession, I want you to start working on uh, the rest of the songs in Guess This Song, Warriors, okay? We already went over number two, which was Mary Had a Little Lamb. But we haven't done number one, number three, or number four. We're going to, uh, I want to have those más o menos learned by the time we get back to school. Also, when we get back to school from break, I'm going to be giving you a brand new song. So you have to make sure that you are studying how to read these notes and what they sound like, what they look like, what they are look like on your instrument. Okay? So, starting off, let's say that we have a note that's right here in the third space, okay? What string is that on? Well, remember, we said that the open string below it would show you that, okay? The closest open string that we have is A, right here. So it's not open A, it's not A1, because that would be on the line, it's A2, okay? So this would be A2. And the letter name for that is, remember, F-A-C-E, that would be C, okay? The line on your instrument, the A2 line, is called C sharp, okay? As we go through the year, I'm gonna explain the difference between C sharp and C natural, or C nothing, okay? Uh, but don't worry about that right now, it's A2. That's how you figure this out. So, let's find D3, all right? D3, or the, the letter name would be G. All right, you have open D right here, and then if it was on this line, it would be D1, 
if it was in this space, it would be D2. Then right here, you would have D3. Okay, that's how you figure this. The notes always go from space to line to space to line. That's how they move up. That's how your fingers move up on that string, okay? Now, I said before that this position, this note, is called letter G. Now, don't get confused if you hear, okay, I want you to play a G, and then you automatically go for your G string. There's different Gs on your instrument, okay? There's a G, open G right here. There's G, which is D3. And there's G up here, which is E2. I'll put E right there, okay? So, as far as we're concerned right now, you have three Gs on your instrument. You also have three A's and three B's that we can reach right now, okay? Then you have two uh, C's, two E's, okay? Uh, go, uh, C, D, E, goes up from there. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, just because the note is called G does not mean it's always open string, okay? A lot of you guys did that on your, uh, on your final. Make sure that you're aware of that, that different notes on different spaces on the staff can have the same name. They could be G, G, and G. You just have to know which one is which, okay? Now, uh, the next part I want you to show, to show you is to make sure that when you're putting your fingers down on your instrument to play, that your finger goes on top of this, uh, the tape that I have on your instrument, but doesn't go further than the tape, okay? Because I see some people putting their fingers down and they're putting them down like this, okay? I'm gonna put the bow right where the end of the finger is and lift up the finger. Look where that is, that's not on the tape. That's almost beyond the tape, okay? So, if your finger is on the tape, but not further than the tape, like right there, see that? Put the bow right there. And the bow is exactly at the end of the tape, which is where we want to be, okay? So, that's for every single finger. A good exercise for you guys to do at home is to play your string back and forth. Make sure you're holding your bow correctly. Do a down bow, do an up bow, then put the finger down in exactly the right spot. And then, again, exactly in the right spot with the middle finger. Then again, with the ring finger, exactly in the right spot. And then pinky, exactly in the right spot. Try and bring your bow all the way from the frog, that's this part right here of the bow. Bring it all the way down to the tip of the bow, and then return it back. Now, also be careful. You have to balance your bow on the string because I see some of you doing stuff like this. Where you're hitting a different string. That's because your bow is very wavy. You need to make sure that it's balanced on the string and that it doesn't touch another string. That's harder when you get into the middle strings, but still, you have to practice that. Because I see some people doing this. Because their bow's moving all over the place. It's wobbling, okay? So make sure that your bow stays steady and it's balanced on the string. Back and forth, all the way to the frog, and then all the way to the tip. Okay, same thing with the D. Mr. Nava wasn't doing it. You heard that. Okay, I'll try again. Okay? That's a good exercise to go back and forth. Look at your fingers when you're doing this. Don't just be like... Okay, I did it, I should be good. No, you have to look at your fingers and make sure that you're holding your bow correctly, okay? So guys, as far as your sheet music is concerned, you gotta make sure that you know where these open strings are. And then if you have a note that's not on an open string, you'll be able to know at least what string it's on and then be able to count up and find out where it is. 
the more you do this, the more you practice it, and the more we do it in class, the better you're going to get. And I'll be able to put a brand new piece of music in front of you, and you'll be like, okay, looking. All right, here we go. Da, 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 da. If you want to do that, then this is what you have to do. If you don't want to do that, then you're in the wrong class. But uh, we're going to do it, okay? So to make it easier on you and to make it easier on me, let's work together on this. This is your job. You have to make sure that you get this. Also, I want to make sure that you know about the ledger lines, okay? Open G has two ledger lines above it. These are these little lines. They're called ledger lines. The G1, or A, would look like that because notes go up from space to line, then from space to line. This is G, G1, or A, G2, or B, and G3, or C. Okay? That's how your notes go up on G string. The next note up from here, this is on a line. The next one up would be open D, because it's on a space. Line, space. Okay? And guys, I'm only drawing whole notes here. I drew some half notes here. But it can be a whole note. It can be a half note. It can be a quarter note. It can be an eighth note. It can be any note. It's just the placement of the note that you're talking about. Okay? Now, on E string, you have E1 or F sharp. Then you have E2 or G. The next one up, E3, this is on a space, it would go to a line. E3 or A. And then the next one up, E4, would look like this. And that would be the letter B. Okay? Now you're probably wondering, how come some are sticking up? How come some are sticking down? Mr. Nava actually made a mistake. The general rule is, when you get to the to the middle line or the B line, that's the last group of notes that the stick is going up. If you have a half note or a quarter note or an eighth note, the sticks go up. So actually, this one should look like this. Because from then on up, the stems, I keep calling them sticks, but they're called stems, the stems of the note go down and to the left. Okay? So that's how you properly write notes. Up to the middle line of the staff, those stems will go up. Above that, the stems will go down and to the left, okay? So uh, practice writing out notes, guys. Practice playing this, and you should be fine by the time we get back from intercession, okay? If you have any questions, leave them, please, in the comments down below, and I will help you out, okay? I can't help you if you don't, if you don't tell me what your question is. Uh, hopefully, you guys are practicing. Hope you're, hopefully, you're enjoying your break, and I am excited to see you when you guys come back, all right? Have a good one. Bye.